All right, guys, how's it going today? It's the East Banglers. Today we're talking all about Del Val. Uh, we're trying to get you guys on stripers. So today we're talking about stripers. You know, striper bite is pretty hot right now, so might as well talk about it. Today we're going to talk um, stripe bass fishing at Lake Del Val in Livermore, California. Pretty much everything you need to know to go out and target and catch good size striper as well as trophy size striper. So you're going to go through a lot of shakers. You're going to go through a lot of undersized stripers at Del Val. You're going to come across the occasional, you know, keeper. It's a quality fish. And then uh, even more rare is those trophy fish, those 20, 30 plus pound fish. Now I've heard of two in my lifetime 30 plus pounds coming out of that lake. So they do have a big striper in there. Let's talk today about some of the conditions you're gonna face, some of the baits you're gonna wanna bring, and some of the gear, rods, reels, tackle, etc., line, why, and uh, get you guys on some stripers. The first thing we're gonna talk about is, you know, in general, it does get windy at Del Val, so keep in mind it's a very windy area for, for a variety of reasons. Um, the boat gives you the best odds when you're going for those big striper or when you're just going for a lot of striper, the boat is key. It allows you to target a lot of water and a lot of times these striper move. So they might be in this cove or in this one pocket or uh, off a point or just open water. And they might be there for a length of period, maybe 10, 20, 30 minutes, but eventually uh, these fish tend to move and they're schooled up. So having a boat is so essential. Now, when you're striper fishing, keep in mind, there's a lot of different baits you guys can use. So some people like to go out and uh, they like to throw giant trout swim baits or big swim baits in general to try to get those big stripers to bite. And a lot of other people, they just go out with what works most consistently. And that's gonna be, you know, your chicken liver, your chovies, your anchovies, squid. And that really does, it does uh, really good. And it produces, for the most part, the majority of those striper coming out of that fishery. Now, I know some people, have, they're, they're uh, hooking the back of the trout, you know, and le letting that trout go out and uh, trying to get a big striper that way. Just watch out because, uh, you know, the fine for that's like over $2,000 and it's it's pretty bad, but um, it's not really worth it. Um, so just try and keep that in mind, you know, it's tempting, but uh, it's definitely not worth it. Now, this lake definitely is host to a very abundant population of stripers. They've taken hold of the entire fishery. They are the top predator in that body of water. So when you're targeting them, you kind of have to remember they run the, they run the show and they get to generally uh, position themselves where they want. And a lot of these are trout eaters. They put a lot of trout in here. And, you know, if you guys are really trying to make sure that you have the right gear, you want to be running somewhere between 12 and 50 pound test. I would recommend fishing 17 to 20 if you're starting out and deciding if you want to go heavier or lighter from there. But keep in mind, these striped bass, they do have significant teeth, uh, enough to cut line, and they are very feisty fighters. I mean, these guys are full of fight and full of heart. They, uh, they don't stop kicking until, yeah, <laughs> it's all over. So I, I, I uh, recommend, you know, a medium heavy rod to a heavy rod, generally that uh, length isn't going to matter unless you're trying to cast out really far. I recommend the longest rod you can get up to eight feet. And, you know, that's going to work really well for you. And as far as your gear ratios, 
for reels, spinning reels and bait casters, it does not matter unless you're throwing a swim bait. If you're throwing swim baits out there, you definitely want to stick to a five to one, a five, four, one, at the most, a six, one, one gear ratio. And that's going to make that swim at the right speed instead of looking extremely unnatural. So today we're talking Lake Del Val, we're talking striper fishing, um, and we're talking everything you need to know. The only thing we haven't covered is, let's talk about where you're gonna focus your time. So if you're on the lake and you're at the marina, you wanna go to the opposite side of the lake, you wanna go to the dam, and across from the dam is a point. That point is very productive. It's a deep, but it's a long point that tapers out and it's in deep water. And a lot of times that's where a lot of the bigger striper in the lake come from is that area over there. Now across from this, across from this um, entire deep section, there is a, I guess it's, it's, I'm trying to think of the word. It's like the transition between deep water and that shallow water in the coves. You'll see um, a lot of grassy shorelines on the opposite side and a lot of shallow water. A lot of times in the spring and fall, that's where you're going to get like the numbers. That's where you're going to hook into fish after fish. It's going to be a lot of fun. You're not going to get as many of those big stripers, but you're going to get a lot of stripers. And a lot of this has to do with the fact that that back of the lake gets pressured the least. It's not easy to get there walking or anything like that. You pretty much have to be on a boat. But the deal is that it just doesn't get as much pressure as the rest of the lake. And on top of that, for a lot of reasons, it has some of the clearest water in the lake. For whatever reason, those striped bass really prefer clear water if they can find it. And, you know, there are a few that hang out in the narrows and gorge on those rainbow trout right after they're planted in the tube. But those ones are not as easy to catch because they're gorging on those trout. The ones out by the dam and on the other side of the lake are much more active in general. They're much more uh, willing to bite um, just about anything. But I've done really well right after, you know, just fish points with top water, jerk baits. If you're going that way, you can get away with A rigs and stuff like that and still catch those, those striped bass. Lipless, crankbaits, LV500, Lucky Craft, things of that nature will catch you some striper out there. That's what you want to do. If there's a boil going on, you get your lipless, you get your jerk baits in your top water, and you start chucking them out there. Some of your swim baits, chuck them out there. Um, you know, and when the bite gets real slow and you can't find boils, that's when, you know, you can cruise water and try to locate fish or you can slow down and you can bait fish in areas that you know are very productive. Focus on points, guys, and do your best. You're going to get on some uh, striper. The question is how big and how many. So uh, hopefully this video helped for you guys. Stay tuned. we got more coming.